now let's look at a second example and uh, uh, this example is actually related to uh, uh, lie detection so we have a polygraph test that's gonna allow us to actually examine if a person is lying or is telling the truth right so again we are going to use the uh, Bayes theorem to evaluate uh, whether a person is actually lying or not so uh, in terms of uh, the hypothesis or why we have two different hypotheses one is that the person is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is lying which is actually y equal to false and the other alternative hypothesis is that uh, the person is actually truthful so y equals to true right so that's the two different hypotheses right and then uh, the test result from the polygraph can also be uh, sort of if uh, if the, 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 the can also have like two possibilities true or false right so one possibility is that the polygraph is saying that the person is lying and then the other possibility that is that the polygraph is saying that the person is being truthful um, and the polygraph test is actually quite accurate so the police is telling you that um, the probability that um, the person is actually lying and uh, uh, the polygraph actually detects that the person is lying is uh, 0.99 right and uh, if the person is actually truthful and uh, the polygraph is telling that is, is the polygraph test is saying that the person is uh, not lying is uh, 0.95 so compared with the previous um, medical test uh, example so the two numbers here is kind of different right the one is a 0.99 and the other one is 0.95 um, and then from these two conditionals, these two conditional probabilities, what can we actually infer? Right? Again, the conditional probabilities, um, if you treat it as a conditional probability, then the summation over all the different values of the sample space for x, the observation, is supposed to give you 1. So, so, so if x equals to force conditional on y equals to force equals to 0.99, then x equals to true that the and y equals to force is supposed to be 0 0.01, right? So if the person is actually lying, but the polygraph test actually returns um, truthful, that so so the polygraph test is saying that the person is not lying. Then this this probability is going to be one subtract this number. Then that's like 0 0.01, right? And then from this particular conditional probability, we can infer that uh, if the person is being truthful. Uh, and the polygraph actually says that the person is lying is the, the probability for that is actually 0 0.05 right so just one subtract to this number and then and then we also have our prior right prior um, the prior is based upon say the characteristics of the person the the person's uh, character right for example this is a very reliable person uh, the person has never told a lie in his entire life right so the probability for the person to be lying is actually very very low it's one over 1000 right and from that we can actually infer that if the probability that the person is being truthful is uh, 0.999 right it's a very it's a, there's a very very low probability that the person actually tells a lie right um, and in this example we're going to sort of look at uh, the, the the influence of the prior the prior is actually <laughs> Is actually quite important. Is actually quite important. So, so, so what we are actually interested in evaluating is that um, now the polygraph is saying that the person is lying. It's a very trustworthy person, right? He's a very trustworthy person. But the polygraph returns a result that says the person is uh, lying. So we want to know, want to know how reliable is that particular test result, right? So in order to actually evaluate how reliable the test result actually is, we need to actually compare. We need to actually compare the probability of the person is actually lying, conditional on the test result is false. Right? We compare this probability with the alternative, which is actually the person is actually uh, being truthful, right? And uh, the test result is actually false. The polygraph is saying that per person is lying, right? We have to compare these two probabilities, and 
probabilities, uh, posterior probabilities, and see which one is actually bigger, right? So how do we actually compute that, right? So the probability of the person is actually lying conditional on the polygraph says the person is lying equals to what? Equals to the conditional probability x that uh, of of uh, the, the polygraph says the person is lying conditional on the person is actually lying multiply with the probability the prior right that the person is actually lying and then the denominator is that uh, the probability of uh, the polygraph returns a false the polygraph says uh, the person is lying right and then we can stick stick some numbers in there so x equals to force y equals to force x equals to force y equals to force right that's 0.99 times the prior the prior is this very small number, right? The probability that person is actually lying is extremely small because this is a very trustworthy person, right? It's 0 0.001. That's the numerator. And then the denominator, PRX equals to force equals to what? It equals to, again, we have to use um, the equation that we just uh, we derived in the previous uh, 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 video, right? Actually equals to PRX equals to force conditional on Y equals to true multiply with PR y equals to true plus PR x equals to force y equals to force multiply with PR y equals to force right so uh, so so that's uh, that's this expression here right x equals to positive no it's um, that's the medical x. x equals to force the test result is force but the person uh, the person is also telling the lie telling a lie right is lying multiply the probability that the person is lying plus the test result is false, and the person is actually telling the truth. Multiply the person, the probability that the person is telling the truth. Right. Again, we can stick some numbers in there. Right. 0 0.99. That's for this number. Multiply with this number. 0 0.001 plus. And then this number is what? X equals to force. Y equals to true. Right. X equals to force. Y equals to true. That's 0 0.05. Right. In this case, the polygraph is making a mistake. Right. The person is actually telling the truth, but the polygraph says this person is actually lying. The probability for that is actually given here, 0 0.05, right? And then multiply with the prior that the person is um, is, uh, is 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 being truthful, right? That's 0 0.999, right? And then the denominator has a value of 0 0.05094, right? If you divide them, you get a very small number. That's 0 0.0194, which is about two percent of chance. So the posterior for y equals to force conditional on the polygraph is saying that the person is lying is actually very very small. It's two percent. It's two percent, right? And then what's gonna be the the, the posterior uh, the probability for y equals to true conditional on x equals to force, right? Right. So so x equals to, equals to force for, for for both cases, right? And then the probability for y equals to force is 2%, then what's going to be the opposite, right? What's going to be the probability for y equals to true? It's about 90, 98%, which is much, much bigger than the pro pro posterior probability that y equals to force and x equals to force, right? So in this particular calculation, we have shown that the test result, the polygraph test result, that the person is lying is actually not reliable, right? And what about what about if we increase the the, the prior right y equals to four y equals to force to, to a slightly bigger number right it's a here it's like extremely small one over one thousand right here it's still quite small but it's about like a four hundred times bigger five hundred times bigger than this small number right it's about five percent right it's still a very trustworthy person but um, the probability that the person is lying has been raised has been raised to uh, about 4.8 percent. Right? It's a it's a it's a change in the prior. It's a change in the prior. Right? We have increased the prior for the person is actually lying. Right? And then we also have to change the the, the this probability. Right? P probability for y equals to true. The person is uh, being truthful. It's still a very big number, but it's slightly smaller than this number, right? So like 95%, uh, 95% uh, of chance. It's not 99.9% .9 of chance. It's um, right. Um, so in general, it's it seems like it's not really 
not really a big change in prior, right? Maybe for this number, it's uh, it's uh, like 500 times bigger, uh, 50 times bigger. It's not 500, 50 times bigger, right? But for 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 this probability, it's really a small reduction, right? But let's look at uh, what's going to be the test, uh, what's going to be the result of the Bayesian uh, calculation, right? And then what's going to be y equals to force and x equals to force, conditional on x equals to force, right? Uh, everything else is kind of similar, right? The only thing that we have to change for the numerator is um, is this number, right? We have to change it from 0 0.001 to 0 0.048, right? And then for the, for the denominator, we have to actually change uh, the denominator also, right? This number has to be changed to 0 0.048, right? And then this number has to be changed to uh, uh, point, uh, uh, 0.952, right? And then the denominator now has a new value that's 0 0.09512, right? And then if we actually do the division, carry out the division, it's about 0.4996. So it's about 50% of chance, right? So, so if you actually raise the prior by a small amount, the posterior for y equals to force actually has increased from like 2% to close to 50%. And at this point, we cannot actually say whether the test result is reliable or not based upon this particular calculation, right? Um, so, so, so what this example is actually telling us is that this prior, the prior that's used in the Bayesian calculation actually has a um, very important plays a very important role in the final result of the posterior, right? It's uh, it's uh, it's not just uh, this uh, conditional probability or the likelihood that's actually con controlling the result of the posterior, right? It's it's the combination of both. It's the both the likelihood and the prior, right? Uh, 